Yo, what's up world? Welcome back to the channel, APW Sports signing in. And I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different as the episode one of the Chicago Bears Hard Knocks has just finished up. Well, I just finished watching it myself and it's time for me to do my little reaction to it. I know I promised you guys reactions, so here they are. The reactions are here. But without further ado, let's dive into it. <laughs> Now, going into this episode, it was a couple of things that I kind of figured that the episode or HBO and the NFL would touch on. One, of course, that will be the introduction of one Caleb Williams. And <laughs> the funny thing is, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting them to have the old 90 Chicago Bulls announcer to announce Caleb Williams as he was going into practice. I did not expect them to set it up that way. And you even heard in the background where they were getting clips from national media outlets that he could be compared to Michael Jordan. Okay, yes. Yeah, Slug, yeah, pump the brakes on that one. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, you might want to pump the brakes on that. I don't care. If Caleb Williams does bring a Super Bowl or two, then we can start talking about that. But Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the greatest player to ever play basketball, for people to make those comparisons. Stop it. It was a bit funny that they did bring the Bulls announcer, but Michael Jordan? Yeah, I, even though I think this is, at least the last few years, has been more of a football Bears town because the Bulls have been, let's just say, ass. But it is crazy that they made those comparisons. But some of the things that I did pick up from Caleb Williams is, I'm glad HBO did it that way too, where they didn't just show him in just such a hype positive light that they didn't just show all all of his ups i like the fact that they show some of the things that are down how can he react to when adversity hits how can he react when he maybe doesn't make a good throw maybe doesn't make a good read practice isn't going the way he expected or wanted to i was looking forward to see what his reaction would be when that happened versus the good which is why I'm glad HBO kind of pointed it out. And another thing about HBO pointing it out and them bringing Nick Saban on, well, fun fact first, I didn't know Matt Eberflus played for Nick Saban at Toledo. That's something that's, I'm today years old learning that Matt Eberflus actually played for Nick Saban. That's something else that I personally did not know or it might have slipped my mind that he actually played for, we could call it the greatest college coach ever, and Nick Saban. It's crazy that he played for him, and it actually was back in the 90s. It's just crazy how time flies. But one thing that Nick Saban said that I have been preaching was all the hype, all the expectations can possibly kill a quarterback, can possibly kill anybody with those expectations with that hype and he said the same things that i've been preaching on this channel you can go back to my caleb williams predictions is that development is key development is key i don't care what type of hype he comes in with i don't care what he did at usc i don't care what anything happened at usc the main thing that i personally was looking forward to seeing that I personally am looking forward to seeing with Caleb Williams and this team is just development because he can come in with all this hype and expectations and the Bears could just throw him out to the wolves. And if he's not properly developed, well, there goes your hype and there goes your expectations. And he pointed out something that I personally pointed out as well. Look at what Peyton Manning did his rookie year. He had 28 INTs. He had 28 interceptions his rookie year. 
Did that slow on his development? No, because of the mindset and the team knew was to develop him versus just throwing him to the wolves and expecting great things day one. And this is something that I've always told Bear fans. I've told Bear fans to lower expectations one and told fans that there will be growing pains. He's not gonna come into this football team and hit the ground running. Even CJ Stroud last year, as a lot of people wanna compare him to, which I love CJ Stroud personally because he's from the Ohio State University. Even he had growing pains his rookie season. Believe it or not, the great season that he had, he had growing pains. So any rookie expected with the expectations that Caleb Williams is going to have is going to have growing pains. And I am so glad that Nick Saban pointed that out. That Nick Saban pointed out that development is key. I'm so glad of that. And another thing that was actually, actually freaking hilarious was Theo Benedict singing of God Bless America and he took off all of his clothes. That had me dying. That had me dying. And I kind of hate the fact that Caleb Williams didn't remember the words to John Legend's Ordinary People. But if you're going to do that, at least try to remember the words, Caleb. Come on now. Come on now, Caleb. Come on now, you're going to do better than that. But he did announce the contract thing with him getting the signing bonus. I didn't think they were going to make the guy like a Theo Benedict announced his contract bonus. But hey, it is what it is. But the fact that he sat there and took off all of his clothes, singing God Bless America, guy from Canada, it was funny. That, that was funny. One thing I do hate... I do hate the fact that Theo Benedict got hurt in that game. Now, that was something that kind of slipped past me that I really didn't catch actually watching the game in live in person. Well, not in person. I wasn't there. But watching the game live, I did not realize that anybody got hurt. And I hated for it to be the fact that it was Theo Benedict that got hurt. And he looked like he was starting to develop into one of those characters that every year Hard Knocks has one of those guys that just... Everybody falls in love with, everybody really gravitates towards. I just hate the fact that he had that hamstring injury on the field goal. Oh, that was an extra point. On the extra point that he had a hamstring, what was they say, a grade two hamstring strain. He'd be out for like four to five weeks, which is basically the rest of camp, which absolutely sucks and it hurts his chances to make the team. But that is what it is. And it's funny that they did play the announcement of, I mean, the commentary of the game that Joe Buck and Troy Aitman, and you guys probably know how much I hate them. But it is funny to say that they were going to highlight Brett Rippon and they were going to highlight Colin Johnson during Hard Knocks. And that is exactly what happened. Well, they did have great games. I'm not going to speak too much about the actual game itself. I believe that. In the cards, I did a full reaction to the game, but it was kind of cute and neat that they were going to point out him and that they were going to point out, well, Brent Rippon, they were going to point out Colin Johnson. One thing I do hate, I wanted to see more of Austin Reed in that game. I wish we could have did a little, they could have had a little bit more with Austin Reed on the, on the actual episode, but Mother Nature took that away from us. And another thing that, before I close this video is that I'm glad they showed the entire, well not entire but they showed some of the discussions that went around DJ Moore's contract extension which I actually did not know a contract extension for him was kind of imminent. I really didn't know that. Even The day it happened was just a surprise to me because I didn't know that was something that was in the works and DJ Moore is one guy that absolutely deserves it. They did highlights bringing in a guy like Keenan Allen. They did bring in, well, highlight bringing in Roma Dunze. I'm surprised they didn't really talk about too much of the and defensive side of the ball. Maybe we'll see that in episode two. But most of the focus of this entire episode was Caleb Williams, wide receivers, and mainly, well, mainly Caleb Williams was the focus of the, this first episode. And some of the imminent things that they were discussing with him, whether it was the sliding, when they brought out the slipper slide, which is actually kind of funny, because I've seen a lot of teams do that to try to help quarterbacks slide. 
and that is something that's going to actually help Caleb Williams down the line and not take those hits and sliding. So it was funny that the Bears actually brought that out to help him. I thought they were going to focus maybe a little bit more on Shane Waldron, but they focused on Eberfuss, his daughter, his family. And I did love this episode. And I'm looking forward to see what episode two brings. I just wish they would have... As much as the Bears focus on offense this offseason, as much as we as fans were focused on the offensive side of the ball, I kind of wish that they talked a little bit more about the defensive side of the ball, which is actually the strength of the Chicago Bears football team heading into 2024. But it was a great episode. You guys stay tuned next Tuesday. I will be reacting to episode two, and I will catch you guys then. Well, I'll be reacting to the Bears game on Saturday against the Buffalo Bills at home, and it's looking like Caleb is going to play in that. And I will see you guys then. Peace.